Welcome to another episode of Get a Good Start. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Get a Good Start. Visit us on getagoodstart.com for the accompanying blog to this podcast, which provides additional information about my guests, links to the information we discuss, and ways you can put into action what we talk about here on the show so you can get a good start. Welcome to another show of Get a Good Start. My guest today is a former board member, an author, a founder of his own consultant firm. He was a former SVP of Siemens Health and Ears. He is currently a professor at Seton Hall University, where he leads the number one ranked Gerald Bassino Center for Leadership Development, which is an undergraduate honors program. Professor Ruchin Kinsal. Professor, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Good morning, Scott. How, how are you today? You doing well? I'm doing very well. Let me kick it right off the way I always do and ask my now famous question. What does getting a good start mean to you? Getting a good start means having a purpose and planning in some way or form without getting too mechanical about it as to how you will realize that purpose. And by that, I mean all of us have different things in life that we focus on. It could be family at times, it could be work at times, it could be, you know, just finding food for the table at times, but we need to think beyond that. Think beyond the daily routine in terms of what kind of impact, what kind of legacy we want to leave. And that is our purpose. So for you getting good start, uh, definitely entails a, a daily, plan of some sort and is that something you reflect on the evening before or something you do first thing in the morning given that purpose is really what good looks like to me from daily life perspective i, I do have you know that that lives with me every day every moment uh, that said i do uh, work with you know a weekly and a daily uh, routine. My weekly routine is what are the three things I want to achieve this week uh, mm -hmm. uh, that will help me get closer to my purpose. Uh, and I think about those uh, over the weekend and that's how I plan my week. On daily basis, I, of course, you know, uh, think about what have I done and what else I need to do apart from the things I actually need to get done. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that keeps me on track. Uh, and then it's also important to have some sort of discipline in your routine, right? Um, and then my discipline, in a way, is more about, you know, uh, saying thank you before going to sleep mm. uh, about the day that we had. Hope that you'll get up next morning because life is really fleeting. Mm -hmm. And when I get up in the morning, you know, I say thank you again. Uh, first thing I do is spend the first hour focused on me, which is, you know, uh, my daily routine, uh, my cup of tea, my point, you know, time of a uh, little bit of reflection and clearing of my head, getting focused on what I need to accomplish during the day, and and just you know then uh, enjoy the day. And then off to off to work. So, professor, if you were able to have the technology available to you to go back and visit your younger self when you were 21, 22 years old, and could share one piece of advice with yourself to help you maybe smooth out some of the rough patches of your life, your career, what would you tell yourself? Yeah, so if I were to talk to my old self, what I would tell my old self is, don't be in a rush. Life is a long road and it will take twists and turns that you cannot anticipate. Uh, so learn to be grateful learn to be in the moment and and uh, yes be ambitious be uh, be very focused on what you want to achieve but at the same time you know know that there will be failures along the way i think your advice to yourself is good because i think about when i started working in manhattan in the advertising world you talk about life fleeting um I turned around and I was at the company I was at for five years all of a sudden. And here I am working in the biggest city in the world and I hadn't explored one bit of it. My, my interaction with New York was walking from the bus station to 1515 Broadway and going up the elevator 42 floors. I had not ventured out anywhere. 
Bryant Park was just down a couple blocks. Central Park was about 30 blocks up. I hadn't visited any of them, not to mention all of the museums and things. Just as you say, in the moment, those are many times in those first five years that I wasn't in the moment and realized the gift of the city I had around me to absorb it and, and participate more in life than just, you know, running to work and running home from work. Yeah, and then we don't do enough of that these days. Uh, I mean, if I look back, even though I would give that advice to myself, I would not be so harsh to say that I did not do it. Um, I do think I took the opportunity to explore, to experience the environment, to learn new things, to look at things from different perspective. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, I was born in India and came to the US when I was 24 with two suitcases. So I had that explorer in me, mm -hmm. right? I had to experience things and, you know, not just focus on what I have right now, but to really explore. I still have a pair of binoculars. So when people talk about what is that one thing that inspires you, for me, it is my pair of binoculars that were given to me by my granddad. Mm -hmm. And that's what I see as a theme of my life, right? Always exploring, always trying to take a pause and be in the moment and always, you know, looking ahead. Um, but that said, like I said, you know, uh, at 21, you don't anticipate a lot of failure. Right. And, and that's the part. All. Yeah, you think you know it all. You don't anticipate a lot of failure. Uh, and then you think you can conquer the world and that energy is very, very good and very, very important. Just don't let failures defeat you talking with my uh, guest from yesterday's podcast, Dr. Dave had mentioned the same, a similar thing where you have to have a plan, but you have to know it's going to change with failure and twists and turns. And he said that his miracles in his life and his career happened when things went off plan and he had uh, to adjust to them. I couldn't agree more. I mean, my, my story of my life is all about <laughs> <laughs> twists and turns. I think I'm living my seventh avatar right now uh, in my career. I mean, I started out being uh, a cadet training for the Indian Air Force, right. which turned into going to school to study architecture. I became an architect uh, and uh, from designing movie theaters uh, across uh, the U.S. I went to uh, becoming a consultant for the biopharmaceutical industry. So imagine that leap. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, when, when from uh, doing that, I went actually inside the industry and you know started to really work on uh, transforming the industry from uh, innovation perspective, from digital perspective. So when I was training to be an Air Force pilot, I never thought of that. And when, when that, you know, uh, turned um, uh, and I was looking at what do I really do next, I'm now a professor here uh, at Seton Hall. Uh, when I was 21, I could have never imagined I'll go through these, you know, stages. And, uh, you know, those are five, the other two roles I do play, the other of thoughts are I'm a dad, I'm a husband, and I'm a son, mm -hmm. right? So uh, those have been the only constants through the life. Of course, they happen at different stages, but everything else I could have never thought of or planned for. Uh, but the thing is, if you are confident about yourself, if you know what your abilities are, if you are aware of your strengths and you are tuned to your purpose, failures can become opportunities because you then look for the next way to fulfill your purpose. And, and uh, that's really uh, what I have learned through my life, right? You have to have a unifying central theme to your life, which is larger than what you're doing then, because what you're doing then is fleeting. You have a much longer shelf life. And, and if you don't really know what that bigger purpose is for your shelf life, you, you, you can get lost when, when failures happen. Well, Professor, your uh, experience, I know, is a gift to the students at Seton Hall. And drawing on that experience, what would be a useful piece of advice you wish you can give to every student at Seton Hall before they leave and start their professional career? We were actually talking about it yesterday in class uh, with the seniors. And uh, what I would say is, number one, be grateful. 
grateful for the education you've had, grateful for the friends you've made, grateful for the networks you have, uh, and, and grateful for every opportunity you got so far because there are many, 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 many who don't have what you got from from your life, right? So that's number one, always be grateful and, and uh, be grateful forever. Number two, uh, in the moment, right? Through your daily routine, find ways to enjoy every day. Find ways to do something that really fulfills you and your passions every day. Uh, it is very important to keep that balance in life. And number three, uh, it is really, about being the voice for people who don't feel empowered to or can't find their own voice. So as, as students, as citizens, as uh, people who should feel our responsibility to make the world better, we should always try to be the voice for everyone. Professor, have you ever been given a piece of what maybe at the time you thought risky advice from a mentor or a peer um, you know, but it was the best advice you received, but in hindsight, it might've been a little risky, you know, somebody saying, just trust me. You know, we go through these moments in life where we have to trust people that maybe we don't know so well, we don't have a great relationship with, but there you're building a, a peer relationship, a mentor relationship, and you just trust them and you go with it. Have you, can you recall a time when you've experienced something like that? Yeah, so I would not call it a risky advice per se, but uh, I did follow a mentor uh, and that was a big risk I took. So this is when, uh, you know, after my MBA and my first job at e uh, four years into that job, one of the senior partners I used to work with, uh, she took on a role to build a life sciences practice at another consulting company. And she said, Richard, come join me. Hmm. Right, and I was at the time uh, on, so I did not have US green card or citizenship. I was still, you know, on a visa. And so my status in the country was uh, ephemeral at best. Right, <laughs> uh, right. Um, my wife was in school. Uh, she was uh, still finishing up her PhD, and um, um, uh, you know, so so there was a lot at stake. But I didn't think twice. I was like. I have to do this. And I can tell you, you know, uh, ultimately the thing folded after a year and, you know, I had to scramble to get another job to maintain my status and everything, but uh, it was one of the best life defining experiences for me because I took the leap, I learned a lot. I got the experience I would have never gotten if I hadn't done it. Sure. And I'm still thankful to my mentor that I got that opportunity. And I, you know, I still talk to her, uh, you know, uh, every year, whenever anything happens, because that taught me the power of taking risk and, and uh, learning from risk. And that the worst thing that can really happen is not actually that bad in most of the cases. Uh, my, uh, a good close friend of mine says, if it doesn't kill you, Right, the old cliche, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. But I like to say, if it doesn't kill you, you definitely learned a lot more in a shorter period of time because you're forced to learn it, right? Exactly. Yeah, no, that was a great experience trying to, you know, learn about how to start your own business rather than work for someone. Yeah. Right. And, and, and uh, the kind of risk you take, the kind of uh, mindset you have to develop, it's so very different. And, and uh, I would actually say to everyone, Try to start your own one day. You know, mm. take take the time to build something, even if it's on the side, uh, because that'll teach you a lot more about who you are and what your strengths are Absolutely. than just working uh, for someone. So please, everyone, take take a moment to think about what is it that you would want to create uh, if you had all the resources available, and then find time and find ways to do it even if it's on the side, because you'll learn so much more about yourself doing that than anything else will teach you. You know, thinking about that, you know, the, you know, think about the experiences that you had, if you could put together a class, or maybe there's a class already out there that you would require all students to take that would benefit them in their postgraduate life, what would it be? 
Yeah, so the class I would put it together, it doesn't matter what the topic of the class is, but the focus of the class would be one, how to think critically, how to deal with ambiguity, how to work in teams, and uh, how to really, you know, uh, figure out how you can leverage the strengths of people who think differently in achieving a vision. So I would say those are the things I would want to teach uh, anyone and everyone, uh, and it doesn't matter when you learn it. Uh, I am in the process of you know uh, designing a class right now, which talks about the fifth industrial revolution, right? So everyone is right now talking about the third and the fourth still, and I'm trying to foresee what will be the fifth industrial revolution look like will it be about making life better on earth or will it be about space exploration right but the idea is not what that answer is the idea is it's a very ambiguous topic right and then in trying to solve for this topic you have to apply critical thinking skills you have to apply skills of understanding information that does not exist today so creating new knowledge and wisdom uh, you have to depend on a lot of others to collaborate and figure out, you know, what this could look like. Uh, and, and I think those are the core skills that help us really, uh, you know, uh, advance in our life. If you can think critically, if you can deal with ambiguity, if you can work on teams, if you can communicate our ideas effectively and then leverage the strengths of others, then we'll be successful. So that's what I'll try to teach in my class. Professor, one more question. I'm going to let you go and get on with your day. In what non-academic area do you think students should dedicate a portion of their time in order to prepare to assimilate into the corporate world? Uh, yes, this is a very good one, I would say. And this is actually another advice I got from one of my mentors. I never got to do this uh, a lot is uh, drama. Enroll yourself in a drama class. I mean, yes, it's still academic, but it, it's not academic in that sense. Uh, right. uh, just, you know, join a company somewhere. Uh, and the reason I say that is one of the biggest skills you need to have as a contributor to the world is an ability to communicate your ideas. And there, in my view, there is no other activity that teaches you how to communicate well using both your body and your voice. And, and I would encourage everyone to become part of a company and, and uh, participate in drama uh, because that will teach you how to really use your whole body uh, to engage with the audience, to engage with your customers in the future, to engage with your employees in the future who you will need to inspire, to motivate, to bring along. Uh, so learn that I was fortunate to have done that, uh, you know, just because I was part of, you know, drama companies and part of the you know, troops uh, when I was growing up. So I got it from that perspective. But if, you know, I encourage myself to do that, uh, I would encourage everyone to do something like that. Absolutely. You know, uh, that's a great piece of advice. I've never heard that one before, but certainly through my experience, something I have been trying to bring to students who I counsel is how to perform, right? Because you yeah. have to perform. Uh, if you have any aspiration of that corner office, you're going to have to stand up in front of a bunch of people, overcome your fear of speaking and be a public speaker. You're going to have to sell an idea. You're going to have to be part actor, part salesman, part best friend, part villain. And you're going to have to like you said, be dramatic about it and really put on a show. So that's great advice. And, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Professor, thank you very much for taking time out of your day to join me. I know the every, all the students who, and it's a growing audience. It keeps growing almost exponentially every week uh, are going to take a lot away from this, this interview with you. So I appreciate it. I look forward to speaking with you again in the future. Thank you so much, Scott, again, for having me. It's always a pleasure uh, to be you know, part of uh, such uh, initiatives where we can hopefully 
share some of our experiences that make the next generation even better than we have been. So thank you again for this. Have a great day. You too. Thank you.